Hey, welcome to the show. I'm a little late, but oh well. Uh, oops. Okay, get this out of here. There we go. Apparently, uh, Biden will be signing an order to require federal law enforcement to review and revise policies on, wi on use of force and it would restrict the flow of surplus military equipment to local police. In addition, it would encourage limitations on chokeholds and no and no knock warrants by attaching strings to federal funding. The people who described the order spoke on conditions of anonymity. Okay, anonymity. Whatever. Uh, ahead of the of any public announcement, which is scheduled for the first day after Biden's return from the first, from his first trip to Asia as president. He is expected to appear alongside relatives of Floyd, who was killing by Minneapolis police sparked nationwide protest. It was the largest series of demonstrations in American history occurring uh, in the midst of a coronavirus lockdown and President Donald Trump devi uh, divisive re-election campaign, however, transforming the initial outcry into po political change has proven difficult when four officers were convicted last year by, for killing Floyd, Biden urged Congress to pass legislation reform uh, by the anniversary of his death. The guilty verdict was not enough, he said, and we can't stop here. However, no legislation was passed and bipartisan ta uh, talks dragged on and later broke down. The White House eventually decided to move forward with executive actions uh, rather than wait for Congress. In September, the Justice Department curtailed federal agents' use of no-knock no uh, uh, warrants, which allow law enforcement agents to enter a home without announcing their presence and updated its policy to prohibit agents from using chokeholds in, mo in most circumstances but extended such rules to local police in more, more challenging and White House officials have spent months in negotiating negotiations with civil rights groups and police organizations. The, results set of, uh, the resulting set of policies is less extensive than originally sought, not to mention delayed by a year. We know, uh, we know full well that an executive order cannot address America's policing crisis the same way Congress has the ability to do, but we're, go but we're got to do everything we can, said a statement from NW, uh, NAACP President Derek Johnson. Well, here's a thought on that. How about um, not only not allowing uh, officers to uh, use excessive force. Uh, also, make sure that um, there is some sort of easier access to mental health because it could be a mental health issue. In fact, I'm pretty sure majority, well, I can't say majority because I don't know that. Uh, a lot, I can say that. Uh, a lot are more mental, um, uh, more mental uh, illness related. Um, a mental crisis, I think, I think it's sometimes called, uh, anyway, yeah, and they should just have a, a counselor of some kind on call for those types of emergencies. Um, that would help, uh, I think, um, lessen the whole thing. I think that would help when it comes to people with the disabilities, mental disabilities, as well as psychological disabilities, as well as people who have, um, who take medication to keep themselves balanced, that sort of thing. I don't think that, <clears throat> I, yeah, it's, it's really difficult for me to look at this and not think this is politically charged because midterms are coming up and, more likely, his bus going to get uh, his his party's going to bus hand to him, to them. Um, so I don't know. Uh, I I have really big doubts on this. And another uh, story that came out apparently, um, they're trying uh, the the Biden administration is trying to reopen uh, relationships with Cuba. 
at Cuba, excuse me, with Venezuela, despite Madame Shami years has been, <coughs> despite many, many years of embargoes and tariffs and sanctions and other shit like that, I would just think that this would be the, uh, a way of transitioning from oil. I mean, oil is getting way too pricey. I mean, I saw, I mean, it was like 429 for a long time. Now it's like 449, 459. And that's here, and that and that's here in Ohio, and that's cheap compared to what I've seen in other places. Like, I think I even heard there was like $7 of California, 750 in Seattle, and other places. Like, what's the point? Let's move away from these things. There are, now I, I also heard that uh, a lot of chemicals go into making the EVs or electric vehicles and batteries and stuff like that. You know, those kind of chemicals I could live with because, for the most part, those things will actually help with the environment and not necessarily add to the climate change. We are in May, going into uh, June. We shouldn't be feeling uh, June weather until June, late June, uh, early July. We're in May, and we, yeah, we're, we're in May, and we're feeling 80 degrees, 70 degrees, 60 degrees. We're not feeling thir uh, 45, 50, 55, and maybe early 60s. I mean, I know I'm from the, the west side of the United States, and I know that I'm, like, this is the first official, like, non-COVID-related summer, or season changing but I'm it, it's not the fact that they're changing that, that the that's changing seasons or changing temperature is the quickness that we go through it and the temperature of which it starts if you're mill if it's 70 and it's December I think we had that a year or so a, a year and a half ago when we first moved here I think it was like 70 in December I'm like Okay, it's December. We should be having 30s and 40s, not 60s or 70s, you know, stuff like that. So I think this would be a perfect opportunity to have uh, the Green New Deal enacted. I think it would be a perfect opportunity for it to be, along with the jobs program, monetary theory sponsored, uh, because that creates c competitiveness for wages to, to be increased. Because cost of shit's gonna go up either way. People need the money to be able to pay for that shit. Um, and for the Joe Manchins of the fucking world who have who have outside assets in both coal and gas, oil, stuff like that, for him to be the committee chairman of a committee that is supposed to regulate this shit. That's the dumbest thing I think I probably have heard of. That's kind of like, um, uh, that's kind of like, well, you know, actually, that's that's kind of, that's not kind of like anything. That's that's basic. Uh, for if you have a hotel and if you have a, ho a chain of hotels and you're in charge of uh, charge of um, interior or something like that, you know, and that that. I don't know. I don't know of another example that I can say at the top of my head right now. So that's the closest I can come up with right now. Uh, but it's stupid, and the fact that Chuck Schumer keeps it going that just tells me he's every single establishment uh, person in office right now should be thrown out. Should not be allowed to take lobbyist freaking jobs or be. On any board or any, they should be shunned. They should be uh, ashamed. They should be kicked out of every perspective, uh, every perspective job they could get. Because, in a way, if you think about it, if you're doing something that will that will create harm to your country, that's treasonous. I believe. I mean, they call Trump treasonous. They they didn't. They never call any other freaking Democrat treasonous. They only called one Republican treasonous. Last I checked. And now, Biden's doing the same damn thing that Trump started. 
And there's no treason in regards to Democrats uh, calling, calling Biden. Nope. Now, there are some on the Republican side doing that, but, I mean, they're the same way as Democrats when Trump was in office. Oh, no, it's not treason. That's now you're full of it. Now you're making shit up, you know, that sort of thing. However, there's been a couple of things that they said that were made up that actually turned out to be made up. Um, like the, like the Trump-Russian tie turned out to be made up overall. Uh, I think there was a, a, a time where he was trying to actually build, like, you know, hotels down there but it fell through and that's that as far as that part goes anyway uh let's see so yeah uh biden decided to try to uh reopen uh reopen up talks with venezuela despite the fact that they tried to make uh guaido the uh the president of a country he never won election to so now they had to pretty much crawl their hands and knees, at least in my head anyway, to uh, to Maduro, and beg for uh, for gas. And actually, uh, Maduro has also been working with Iran, who is <laughs> uh, not a big fan of the U.S. either, and vice versa. So countries that we have been shunning for years are actually now working together. Um, I can't say we didn't uh, we didn't deserve it as a country. I can't say we didn't, as far as that part goes. Of course, we did to a lot of degrees. I mean, all the sanctions that were put on Iran, all the sanctions that were put on Venezuela, Cuba, and now, and because of supply, because of supply shock, because of the supply chain. All that shit was fucked up because of the pandemic, because we, because corporations were allowed to send all those freaking jobs that were here in the United States overseas because it cost less to produce over in, in, in other countries, which, again, that's where a jobs program would have been good too. I mean, there's no there's no time where a jobs program isn't gonna isn't not gonna hurt. The economy is always good, and I may have actually said that wrong, but anyway, I mean, all this stuff is is not rocket science. It's not. If you lose industries, then you have to develop some sort of jobs program to make other industries, therefore make a demand for something else. I don't see how hard that is. For those not to be happy, just screams corruption. Screams for people to, to get voted out. Those people who are involved in the corruption, the people, the underlings who are involved in, you know, keeping it secret, or at the very least not coming forward and bravely saying uh, why there's some kind of corruption, who's involved, how long has it been going on, how long have they been involved, that sort of thing. I mean, both parties have done this, so I'm not going to just sit there and say it was the Republicans. Republicans are just, Republicans are just better at it, and they're blatant about it. Democrats try to hide it. I'm sorry, I think I said I think I said Democrats. Republicans, I meant. Uh, Democrats try to hide it. They try to play the good cop, or good cop, bad cop, crap. Who knows? Who gives a fuck? Anyway, the point being is, they're both corrupt. They're both fucked up. The only way I see this going down is, I'm sorry, people do have to, I don't care how many people think that something like MMT is not going to, you know, uh, fix things, or it's not there to fix it, it's there to make you see what's broken. And make you see that, okay, so this can happen. Let's see what we can do to, to fix that. That sort of thing. It's, it's a way of seeing things. And that's how I've been trying to, trying to learn it. And that's why I've been, from everyone between Mike Norman to Stephanie Jelton to Warren Mosler to Steve Grumbines to the Real Progressives as a whole, that's the reason why I'm doing this so I can learn what the system's like, what the economy, the economic system, monetary system, whatever have you, 
and try to help educate as many people as you can. Because obviously China, uh, times have changed. Obviously what, what used to be seemingly right is now obviously wrong. And it's time for people to learn a better way. It's time for people to understand that the two-party system is not there to satisfy anybody but themselves. So either a revolution has to happen. I'm not going to say what type, but a revolution nevertheless. And it's not the Bernie Sanders bullshit because I think he was, I think he was full of shit himself. But that's my opinion. And that's from what I saw. Anyway, let's see. Thursday, I'll be downtown again. Uh, be, it's another um, protest. Protesting the uh, Don't Say Gay uh, bill, I believe. I will be trying to live stream. My phone's been messing up a lot recently. Uh, but I will try. And if it doesn't, uh, I will make sure to have a backup. And either way, that backup, hopefully I'll get as much <laughs> uh, footage as I can so I can put it up. Anyway, hashtag LearnMMT, go to realprogressives.org, support, volunteer, help out, do what you got to do as far as the park, do what you can do, get your friends, get your neighbors who, are, who want to be involved and who want to learn and who may want to contribute in some way, so be it, but we have to learn, otherwise we're... we're going to go down this shit creek without a paddle thanks for watching yeah thanks for watching go to realprogressives.org learn more peace out for now